I don't know why you guys enjoy this video so much. You should let me know in the comments below. But we are back here at Reach Out Reptiles to do another deep dive into the genetics and history of one of our clutches here. That's gonna be hashtag CL23021. I think, yes, 21. Now, a lot of our breedings here are like really far into one locality or chasing down a specific morph combo. This one is totally different. This is the insane, chaotic, mad scientist crossing of several different bloodlines that I have personally been thinking about crossing together for several generations of breeding. It has occupied my thoughts at night, during the day, and every time I saw specific morphs of animals, it was like I was looking right through them. I was looking at them, but I could see their future offspring. And then, before I could get there, Aaron Metcalf from Metcalf Reptiles put these two bloodlines together and beat me to it. It's totally a punk. Okay, so what are we talking about here? First of all, there's like the locality side and specific animals that are picked from these different locality breedings. And then there's the morph side. This clutch is literally bringing like the best traits in locality and morph from the sire's side and also from the dam side. Both sides had something to offer in both directions. Let's talk about where dad came from first. So the father of this clutch was a 75% super dwarf Annery Phantom. Now these Annery Phantoms hatched out spectacularly. They were actually a clutch that we bred here at Reach Out Reptiles using probably my favorite Super Dwarf Phantom stuff that is out there, which belonged to my friend Andrew Acevedo. I actually remember cutting the eggs on these after a few of them pipped, thinking, now I know they're might be annery stuff in here, but I'm not gonna say that they're anneries until after they've shed and had a few meals and things like that. And then we opened up a couple eggs and we're like, annery. I mean, they were like phenomenally annery. So the cool thing about that dad's breeding is that we had taken some of the best annery bloodlines that there were, which originally started with like Kalatoa stock, and this one was an Annery Sunfire Tiger produced by Travis Kubis. He used to have all the best Annery stuff back in the day. We took the female, this would be the Grand Dam, yeah, dad's mom in this clutch, and she was owned by me, grown up by me here, and we put her into Andrew Acevedo's 50% Madu, 25% Kalatoa Phantom, which he didn't know was actually a head Annery at the time. This clutch, not this clutch, but the clutch that produced the data of this clutch, actually proved that out to be carrying Annery. Those of you guys that follow this stuff, the Madu and the Annery just injects these crazy blues and greens. It adds a ton of different contrast in combinations, and it's probably one of the most exciting localities when it comes to Annery. I think it is the most exciting. It's Pretty safe to say. So that made the dad 37.5% Kalatoa, 37.5% Madu, and about this big around as an adult. <laughs> it's just this tiny, cute little thing. Now the mom's side is something else altogether. She actually was a 25% Slayer. You know that we've talked about Slayers before in terms of having like crazy contrast between the blacks and the lighter colors, like the whites, the silvers, the yellows. But they also have just the, the propensity to produce these like deep, rich, orangey reds. It's like that super dark, it's almost like this rust on this sign right here. It's beautiful. Now she was actually a marble sunfire tiger posshead albino. Her slayer came in through a, a marble dwarf project that was actually bred over in Germany by Fila Retic, which was pretty cool. In fact, I owned her, her dad, you know, so the great grand sire on the mom's side, and he was one of the just brightest contrasting marbles that there ever was, super pixelated and all that. Now, back in the day, I was taking these marbles and thinking, what color enhancing gene 
would be really cool with these. And I thought because of that pixelated pattern, kind of shattering it up, reducing that further would make even more pixelations. And so the clear winner would be the platinum because platinum reduces the pattern quite a bit and leaves very little behind. So I thought like that marble scattered across would be awesome. And I made a bunch of platy marble stuff and it was awesome. I also specifically did not choose to put Sunfire into marble. And the reason why is because first of all, Sunfire is like much darker and I wanted brighter color, you know, without going into albino. So I thought it would make it, you know, too dark. Uh, and then also Sunfire does impact the pattern as well usually making thicker blacks and kind of like smoothing the pattern out. You always talk about like the lack of rosettes or like that inky watercolor fade that it has. And I thought, how on earth could that ever look good with the marble pattern? And then somebody hatched one, in this case it was actually Jeff Kelly, and bam, Sunfire marble hit me in the face like a freight train. I don't know what it was about the subtle changes that the Sunfire makes to the pattern added to that crazy marble. It's not the speckly marble that you expect anymore. It's just like little firework explosions of reticulated pattern bursting out all across the snake with a beautiful orangey base that the Sunfire provides. So from that time on with that first original Sunfire marble that I saw from Jeff Kelly, that's literally the only like impulse buy mainland that I have picked up in decades <laughs> because it was so good looking. It actually belongs to Chris White at this point. So ever since I saw that animal that Jeff produced years and years ago, I was like, all right, I gotta make some Sunfire Marble stuff. This is gonna be awesome. So I'm slowly like, growing up my super dwarf marbles, making sure the bloodlines are small, putting all this stuff together to do it the way I want. And then Aaron hits me with this. Hey, guess what I hatched? I hatched a marble, sunfire, phantom, tigers that are 100% head anery. And he did it all with the same bloodlines that I was planning to use. So here's the thing, thinking back to that original marble sunfire, how beautiful the orange sunfire pattern was. It was like, what if you got some Slayer in there? And it doesn't take a lot of that Slayer locality to really impact the bloodlines that you're breeding with. It comes in really strong. And so here I wanted to go as red as I can. So putting the sunfire and the Slayer together is a no brainer. Adding the rich blacks from that Slayer influence into the crazy marble fireworks pattern that you get on the snake. The marble sunfires in this clutch are just ungodly good looking. They are so good looking. They also blend really strangely into other mutations. So like if you look at the picture of the mom, she's a marble sunfire tiger. And again, with the marble sunfire tiger baby that we have in the clutch, it almost like erases all the background, leaving like little pock marks throughout the pattern, but leaves those big, bold side rosettes. It's crazy how that happened. But I'll tell you, my true love was the Marble Sunfire. For me, that was the cat's meow until I saw the Phantoms. Phantom was not something I ever thought about putting into this project. I was gonna just go for like Sunfire Marble stuff with, you know, selectively bred localities and things. But the Phantom, because again, it's like that half tone, it's a half step to a blue-eyed leucistic, right? Reducing a lot of pattern and as well as color. When you added that into the brick red colors of the marble sunfires from this clutch, those rich reds turned into some of the craziest, I mean, it's pink. It's a pink retake, guys. Look at the belly underneath on the Phantom Sunfire Marble. You've got pinks rolling into orange. I mean, this thing looks like a desert sunset in the United States Southwest. It's incredible. The pattern pulls through the Phantom pattern, which also throws its own twist into those pattern mutations, but it's like these little mini bursts or almost like bubbles or chains going all the way down the back. I don't know what it is about the Sunfire and the Marble together, but as a base, when you start adding these other things into it, whether it's the tiger or the phantom or what have you, everything is just up for grabs. Anything could happen. It's so unpredictable. And what's really cool with the Slayer bringing that red in and then the phantom turning it pink, you have that other side of that influence. Remember I was talking about the beautiful anneries coming from the Madu because of the blue and green tones that they pull in? Yeah, these phantom scent marbles have all of that too. So where the Madu on like the Sunfire marbles makes a, a very cool like, you know, kind of chrome silver color within the dorsal pattern, the halftones 
from the Phantoms, lighten it up to like, I've got a Ford Maverick that's cactus gray color. This snake is like sunset pink and cactus gray on the same thing. It's almost like a, like a sea foam green, maybe? And because these are the first ones I've ever seen, certainly with Madu and Slayer in them together, I honestly don't have any idea how these things are gonna turn out. I mean, we all know that retics hatch okay and look better later. So if something hatches out that looks like this, I don't know what it's gonna look like as an adult. Your guess is honestly as good as mine. The cool thing about these clutches, and again, if you use that hashtag CL23021, when you buy one of these babies and you post pictures using that hashtag on any social media that you use, all of us together, our little family of Clutch 21 babies, can watch and enjoy the siblings of our animals grow up through the highlight reels of other people's lives as they share on their social media and they can all grow together. We can compare sizes from all these crazy localities mixed together. We can compare the colors from these morphs that are insane. If you guys are in our Patreon group, special thanks to you guys, by the way. Patreon, you make this all possible. We love sharing our baby's progress with you and especially when you share it with us. But if you guys have seen our Patreon community or even just participated by following the hashtags of our clutches that we do in social media, you too can get that intense reptile keeping bonding experience that is owning siblings from one particular clutch to see how the bloodlines develop so that we can all kind of learn together how to continue moving these forward into a new generation. And if you're anything like Aaron Metcalf, you'll probably beat me to it. That's it for us this week. We'll catch you guys next time. Dude, you're bleeding. Just a little bit. He made me bleed my own blood. Look at how crazy that thing is though. You can't even be mad. So pink and green. Is your camera catching this pink and green? That's pretty crazy. Don't look at that. Look at that. Not that, that. Just don't get that. <laughs> <laughs>